Hospital. When I came home from work, my one-year-old daughter was crying in an unusual way. Yet, my husband was watching TV, laughing hard at a comedian's joke. Just leave her be. It's not the first time she's thrown a tantrum like this. She'll tire herself out and quiet down eventually. Indeed, my daughter, worn out from crying, started to calm down. But her complexion was poor, and her lips were pale and bloodless. I rushed to call an ambulance. At the hospital, after being examined by the doctor, I was informed of an unbelievable truth. My husband had broken his promise to me and continued to do so in secret without telling me. When my husband, who arrived at the hospital later, was confronted, he turned red with anger and lashed out. Are you all having fun ganging up on me, making me out to be the bad guy? You told me to watch our daughter, so I did. You never said to comfort her if she cried or to take her to the hospital if something seemed wrong, did you? My husband, feeling wronged, fled from the hospital. Despite having put our daughter in life-threatening danger without showing any remorse, I resolved to seek revenge. I'm in my late twenties and married. I met my husband through volunteer work in the community. My participation was personal but my husband was part of a company policy that required him to volunteer on a regular basis. He could interact without bias with anyone, especially being compassionate towards the elderly and young children. I was drawn to him seeing this. Later, we began to see each other on several occasions during volunteer work, which gradually turned into a personal relationship, and my husband made an enthusiastic proposal and we were married. After leaving my hometown for college, I didn't return but instead found a job. Since my life was now centered in the city, we lived closer to the city rather than my hometown after getting married. It was convenient for my husband's commute, and we enjoyed a harmonious newlywed life. Having my in-laws closer than my own parents was a bit of a concern, but I got along with them without any problems. Especially, my father-in-law, who continued practicing judo he started when he was young, even now as he approached his 60s. Actually, I also had a phase during my childhood when I was devoted to martial arts, so I had a lot in common with my father-in-law. After getting married, I soon became pregnant. A year and a half into our marriage, I safely gave birth to our daughter, and our happy days increased with the new addition to our family. During my first childbirth, not only did my in-laws and my parents come to support me, but my husband was there too, making me feel cherished by everyone. And I thought our daughter was lucky to have so many people looking forward to her birth. I wondered if I would ever tell her about this time when she's grown up. But the happiness didn't last long. It came to light that the amount of savings and the annual income my husband had shown me before we got married were falsely declared. Regarding the savings, I thought we could overlook the bragging and the lies since we could increase it together from now on. However, I really wished he had been honest about his income. Before I took maternity and parental leave, we were both working, so I hadn't been very aware of his low earnings. But when I am on leave from work to raise our child, my portion of the income is reduced, and it is slowly starting to affect our lives. It would have been okay if it were just the two of us. But with a family member added, it became clear that we couldn't make it on my husband's low income. Kids get more expensive as they grow. Thinking about the future, I couldn't stay relaxed and return to work as soon as our daughter turned one. I would have liked to return to work sooner. But it took me half a year to find someone to take care of my daughter. Spending my days feeling guilty for leaving my daughter in daycare to work was something I couldn't get used to. Because I didn't want my daughter to feel the same loneliness I did, I had hoped to be a stay-at-home mom until she reached middle school, if possible. My mother was a working mom, and from a young age, I was always left at my grandparents' house or in daycare during the day. I felt lonely, but I never resented my mother. She would always make time to see me after coming home from work, no matter how tired she was, and would spend time with me. My father was the same. I felt very loved by my parents. I told myself that if my mother could do it, so could I. No matter how tired I was or how late I returned from work, I always made spending time with my daughter my top priority and showered her with love. My husband seemed to have a job with flexible hours, 
with no overtime or weekend work, which gave him a lot of free time. When I went back to work, he increased his hours of working from home. The responsibility for taking our daughter to and from daycare fell more on my husband, but he never complained and took an active role in parenting. Realizing once again that my husband loves working for others made me glad I married him. He even volunteers on some weekends. As our daughter grows a bit more, I find myself wanting to resume my community volunteer work. Then, one day, as I came home from work and was changing our daughter's clothes, I noticed a bump on her head. It wasn't there when I changed her this morning, so something must have happened while I was away. When I asked my husband, he said she had bumped her head on the corner of a table leg. Given the size of the bump, she must have cried a lot from the pain. Plus, since head injuries can be tricky and not always apparent from the outside, I naturally thought he had taken her to the hospital. To the hospital for just bumping her head a bit? That's an overreaction. My husband said with a laugh. I lost my cool and snapped back at him. Even adults are told to get checked out after hitting their heads, so why would my husband, with no medical expertise, decide on his own? Then, my husband got defensive, saying why should he be complained at when he was looking after her while working from home. If you're gonna say that, then don't stay late at work and come home for our daughter. Or rather, as her mother, shouldn't there be things more important than earning money? I was furious but held back. Saying more would only escalate the fight. After all, if my husband earned more, this wouldn't be an issue. If there's no overtime, he could work a part-time job in the evenings or even switch to a company that pays better. Parenting is just beginning. With a long road ahead, is this really okay? I've become increasingly anxious about my husband's laid-back attitude. Since this incident, I've started to avoid leaving our daughter with my husband and have taken on her care as much as possible. My company showed understanding towards married women. They even turned a blind eye when I needed to step out temporarily from work. But I couldn't say I can't work overtime too many times. While juggling daycare schedules, I made an effort to perfectly balance work and parenting. During such a life, after about two months, there was a funeral in relation to work that I absolutely must attend. An important client who had been very helpful to us had passed away, and I needed to show my face. It was so sudden that I couldn't arrange for weekend childcare, so I reluctantly left my daughter with my husband. After the previous incident where my daughter bumped her head, we went to the hospital together the next day to get her checked. Although it turned out not to be as serious as I feared, the doctor warned us sternly not to take our eyes off her as it might not end so lightly every time. Given that, it seemed my husband had reflected quite a bit. When I asked if I could trust him this time, he assured me there wouldn't be a repeat of the same mistake. I decided to trust his words and left it in his hands. Still, I couldn't shake my worries and called my husband soon after I left home. I checked in again before entering the funeral home. Worrying that too many calls might make him snap at me, but I couldn't help it. However, this time, my husband didn't react poorly to my persistent checking and kindly reassured me, calling me a worrywart. I told myself that as a father, he must be growing too, and it would be fine, before I entered the funeral home. After attending the funeral until the end, I was still concerned about my daughter, so I decided to head straight home. A co-worker who is also a housewife offered me a ride, which I gratefully accepted. Because it would get me home faster. After being dropped off in front of my house and watching the car drive away, I entered my home. Then. I heard my daughter's crying coming from the living room. Rushing there, I found her lying on her back, crying loudly. But my husband, instead of comforting her, was absorbed in the TV, occasionally letting out laughs. Hey, what are you doing? I yelled, turning off the TV he was watching. Annoyed, he snapped back that I was ruining the good part and snatched the remote from my hand to continue watching. As if he was pro me yelling at him, he turned up the TV volume even louder. Then, my daughter's crying gradually became quieter. I immediately realized it wasn't just because of the TV's volume. Her complexion was getting worse, and she seemed to have trouble breathing. Please, 
Get the car ready now! I could drive, but being a novice driver, I didn't have much confidence. After all, we hadn't sold the car, despite my husband's salary not being enough for a family of three, thinking it would be handy in case something happened to our daughter. It's not like she hit her head today, it's just fussiness, right? Just leave her be. Look at her face and tell me to leave her. Just take us to the hospital, that's all. All right, after this show ends, I'll go. My daughter's lips had lost all color. I felt her breathing become more labored. Deciding I couldn't wait for my husband to act, I called for an ambulance. I grabbed only what was necessary and rode in the ambulance when it arrived. I requested the pediatric clinic that took care of my daughter. But due to it being late on a holiday and not equipped for emergencies, we had to look for another hospital. The ambulance wouldn't leave until a destination was confirmed. After being turned away by a couple of hospitals, we finally found a general hospital in the next town willing to take us. During this time, my husband was still engrossed in the TV, showing no interest in us. I told him I would call him once we reached the hospital and left with my daughter alone. Upon arrival, the on-duty doctor examined and treated her. I had a prejudice against on-call doctors, akin to part-time physicians, and honestly, I was worried. But the doctor conducted a thorough examination and quick treatment. The doctor prefaced by saying it could have been quite dangerous if we were any later, but after the treatment, reassured us, she's safe now. I felt a sudden relief and nearly collapsed. A nurse approached me, saying the doctor would explain the situation. My daughter would stay in the hospital overnight for observation. The doctor started with the conclusion. It turned out that her daughter had accidentally ingested an e-cigarette. Even a small amount was too much for her one-year-old body, leading to a sudden change in her condition. When asked if anyone in the household smoked, I reflexively shook my head no. This was because my husband had promised to quit smoking when he found out I was pregnant. Since then, I had never seen him smoking. Nor had I detected the distinctive smell of tobacco, so I had always believed he had kept up with quitting. But it turned out to be different. He had been smoking in secret, careful not to get caught. Though I initially shook my head no, I corrected myself, acknowledging the possibility that my husband might have smoked without my knowledge. Then, my husband arrived at the hospital, looking lethargic. The moment I saw him, I couldn't hold back from confronting him. Why have you been sneaking around smoking? If you're going to hide and smoke, at least don't do it around our daughter. What? What's with the sudden outburst? It's fine now, isn't it? The pregnancy is over. That's not the point. My husband further trivialized our daughter's condition with an indifferent remark, suggesting everything was fine since she was safe. That's when the previously silent doctor raised his voice. I'm not here to interrogate you on why you smoked in secret from your wife. However, children are curious and tend to put everything in their mouths. It's common sense for a father to keep anything that might be ingested out of reach. He also sternly reprimanded my husband for not imagining the harm, even a small amount, could do to a one-year-old, in an era when the dangers of tobacco are well known to adults. Why am I being blamed like this? This is ridiculous! Embarrassed or perhaps wounded in his pride by the doctor's scolding, my husband's face turned red. And he sulked away, eventually fleeing the scene. Honestly, his absence posed no problem. Moreover, without him around, perhaps my daughter could sleep more peacefully, considering he hadn't been there to help when she was suffering. Right now, I felt that my priority shouldn't be chasing after my fleeing husband but to stay by the side of my daughter, who had endured so much pain in her small body. The next day, when the pediatrician examined her, we decided on a bit more observation and an extended hospital stay. While the on-call doctor had deemed her ready for discharge, considering I worked during the day, it made sense to keep her under full-time hospital care for now. I went home for a bit to prepare for my daughter's hospital stay and found it difficult to go to work, so I called in sick. When I got home, there was no sign that my husband had returned since he left. Had he just sulked and come back home, maybe there would have been room for a redo. 
but he pretended not to see it, not even feeling bad about what he did to his daughter, and when it was pointed out to him, he got upset and ran away from home. His actions were on par with those of a middle schooler. I was appalled. My daughter's recovery is the priority now, but once that's over, I've strongly considered divorcing my husband. However, three days passed, and my husband hadn't returned. I had no clue where he might be, despite looking everywhere I could think of. By the fifth day, I couldn't stand it anymore and contacted my in-laws, telling them everything that had happened. After hearing from me, my in-laws found out that my husband was at least showing up for work and ambushed him at his workplace. In fact, I had called his company the day he didn't come home. But they said he hadn't come in. Whether he instructed them to say that to my calls or he truly hadn't shown up, I didn't know, but I was relieved to hear he was at least safe. He might be a failure as an adult, a husband, and a father, but the thought of him dying out there would be too much for me to bear. Even if his actions were problematic, splitting up in anger isn't something I'd feel good about. And disappearing without even apologizing for his treatment of our daughter felt cowardly. However, he couldn't escape my mother-in-law, who had a background as a track and field athlete in her student days. And then he was firmly pinned down by my father-in-law. My husband resisted desperately, but he was no match for my father-in-law. When my in-laws brought him back, my husband's suit was tattered. They had also been fully informed about how he treated our daughter and had given him a thorough dressing down. My husband was completely demoralized and deflated by the time they caught him. After fleeing from the hospital that day, he had never gone home but instead went straight to a hotel. He apparently got new clothes there. Where he got the money for that, I wanted to question, but more pressing was his behavior towards our daughter. Weren't you worried about our daughter? Even if you didn't want to face me, couldn't you have checked with the hospital during my absence and come to visit her? An amateur like me wouldn't make a difference, right? Illnesses and injuries should just be left to the doctors. It's not about that, didn't you feel worried as a person, as a father? I understand that not everyone develops maternal or paternal instincts upon becoming a parent. But to not even worry as a human being, what does that mean? Was your enthusiasm for volunteer work just for show? I'm more disappointed by your lack of human emotion than your absence of fatherly instincts. I'm sorry, but I don't think I can do this anymore. Let's get a divorce. Divorce? Isn't that an overreaction for such a small thing? Besides, it was our daughter who put it in her mouth because you didn't discipline her properly. I wish I could spend more time teaching and raising our daughter slowly. Moreover, it's far easier for an adult to be cautious than to discipline a young child. I wanted to blame it on my husband not being more responsible or his poor earnings. But saying that felt wrong. As I struggled with how to persuade him, my father-in-law, who had been quietly listening, finally spoke up. Enough is enough. The real issue is your lack of patience. Apparently, my husband once worked for a company that paid better but couldn't handle the intense workload and resigned to join his current company. The conditions were no overtime, no business trips, no transfers, and no work on holidays. He chose this company wanting to make meaningful use of his personal time, even though it meant his salary wouldn't increase. When we got married, my in-laws were surprised I decided to marry him despite his income. Today, it's outdated to expect the husband to be the sole breadwinner. It's not bad for the one who can earn to do so and the other to take care of home responsibilities. It seems they thought we had married with that understanding. You get into trouble because you pretend to be more than you are. Marriage means taking on your partner's life as well. You don't have the right to have a family if you're not prepared for that. My husband was sternly reprimanded by my father-in-law and couldn't talk back, overwhelmed by his forcefulness. He was told he needed a serious attitude adjustment and that if he wanted to continue the marriage, he should attend the dojo daily. It seems my husband was traumatized by the strict training he received at his father-in-law's dojo during his childhood, to the point that just seeing a judo uniform would cause him to hyperventilate. Preferring divorce over reliving that nightmare, he muttered about getting a divorce under my father-in-law's pressure, 
and we were able to smoothly proceed with it. Sometime after the divorce, my husband contacted me. During the divorce, we agreed that instead of a lump sum, he would pay child support monthly until our daughter turns 20. My in-laws have been strictly monitoring the payments, and so far, there have been no delays. But when my husband contacted me, hinting that the payments might become difficult, I thought it was about the child support and answered the phone. Actually, you know, my colleague saw me being pinned down with a grappling technique by my dad. It turned out to be quite the spectacle, becoming a hot topic at my husband's workplace. Feeling humiliated by my father-in-law, he confided to his colleague that it was just a minor incident that everyone blew out of proportion regarding what he did to our daughter. He even said, I was just looking after my daughter because my wife asked me to, and then I got scolded, which was really inconvenient for me. Indeed, I had asked him to make sure our daughter didn't fall or bump into anything, to watch her carefully. That doesn't mean just to look after her in a passive sense, but my husband explained it as if he was just watching because I had asked him to. However, that backfired. His colleague ended up saying, man, you're lame. That's like saying you were told to watch a bag but didn't chase the thief because you weren't specifically told to retrieve it if stolen. You're just being contrarian. What are you, a kid? And that was the end of it. Moreover, since my husband spoke about it loudly in the cafeteria, all the surrounding employees heard it. He ended up being criticized by the employees who listened in as being unreasonable. After hearing the rumors, his boss called him in for a lecture about what he learned from his volunteer work, leaving him feeling uncomfortable at work as if being looked at with disdain. He mentioned that work was becoming difficult and he might not be able to pay child support if this continues. He tearfully begged me to explain to everyone that it wasn't his fault and that it was just everyone else making a big deal out of it. My husband hadn't shown any remorse. He agreed to the divorce and to pay child support just because he didn't want to be scolded by my father-in-law. Maybe he saw marrying me as an easy way out, just a good mark. Our marital life was mostly supported by me anyway. You've never apologized to me or our daughter, have you? I don't recall being thanked either. Why should I listen to your request? I agreed to the divorce and the child support, didn't I? What more do you want from me? Come on, it's your turn to do something for me. After all, I got a lot of flack from your dad because of you. Listening to my husband's reasoning only gave me a headache. I told him not to call me about anything other than child support ever again and hung up. But he called back persistently, begging me to help. I was so annoyed that I told him my father-in-law was currently visiting, and with that, the persistent calls stopped. Later, I heard from my in-laws that my husband felt so out of place at his job that he resigned on his own. My husband, lacking technical skills, managed to find a new job but only at a company with even lower wages. He sought financial help from my in-laws, but my father-in-law firmly rejected him. He was suggested by my mother-in-law to live at home to save on rent, but he refused, saying he couldn't stand living with my father-in-law and is somehow managing on his low income. However, things became tough, and he reached out to me. He wanted to reduce the child support amount, claiming it was a significant burden. You have nothing else to offer our daughter but money, so at least do that much. If you really want a reduction, let's go through lawyers. But know that I won't agree to a decrease even if it goes to court. I also warned him that if payments were delayed, I'd sue to recover the funds, and he decided it was better to keep paying the agreed amount on time than to cover lawyer fees. I moved back to my parents' house and am balancing parenting and work with their help. My dad got rehired for three days a week at the company he worked at until retirement, saying he's still capable of working. My mom retired early for my daughter. I felt bad for my mother, who loved her job, but she wanted to do for my daughter what she could not do for me. Don't worry, it's just my self-satisfaction, she said, always by my daughter's side to ensure she never feels lonely. Coming home to someone waiting feels comforting. Seeing the lights on at home brings me peace. The family I always longed for is now right in front of me. Returning home has allowed me to focus more on work than ever. Though the commute to the office increased, 
I was eventually transferred to a branch closer to my parents' home. I'm still in touch with my in-laws. We talk directly or share videos of my daughter's growth remotely, watching over her together. Our shared hope is just one thing. For our daughter to grow up healthy and happy.